One skier has died tonight after getting caught in an avalanche in Sierra. One of it happened on two o'clock this morning. Coming to you, Robin. Well, the skiers who lost their lives here were experts. experts. They had all the right safety gear. Buried, they knew the risks, the but in the end, they could not outrun the power and a fury leg. of Mother Nature one of the other unleashed. It happened in just seconds. A massive wall of snow again, barreling down the side of the mountain, pulling skiers straight the down nearly 3,000 feet. The danger is high, and human triggered slides are very likely on steep slopes. I knew early on that I'd spend my life in the mountains. That feeling of freedom, floating down these mountains in total control, going super fast, kind of do whatever you want. It's just a feeling like no other feeling in the world. All I wanted to do was ski. And I was from like two years old all the way till now. It's, uh, it's been a passion since, since the first time I put skis on. Backcountry has a special allure. I don't know exactly what it is, but you definitely, when you get out there, all you want to do is go a little bit farther, go to that next place around the corner that no one's been before. I was hooked on the fact that you could get out in the backcountry and always find fresh snow and get away from the masses of the ski resort. Well, I think for most people, you know, the the real appeal to backcountry skiing is going out with a group of friends, getting a great workout on the up, and skiing on Jack Powell on the down. And granted, you've got to work a little harder for it to get it, but it's a, it's a very pure, organic experience. In the last few years, technology has advanced to a point where backcountry is way more accessible. Skiing has evolved a ton in the last 20 years, from the skis we ski on to the avalanche equipment we used. Just, just about everything is revolutionized, and with that, more and more people are going in the backcountry. Flipboarding has really changed my approach in the mountains. It's uh, allowed me to go to these places that I previously thought were uh, too hard to get to. Five years ago, I felt like I was no longer riding new terrain to now every day I go out and ride new terrain. Snowmobiles these days have advanced in technology so quickly that they're able to take you out there higher, faster, and farther. When avalanche danger is high, a lot of people are still able to get out there 
and ride in these hazardous conditions. Every year we see um, two, three, four hundred percent more people in the backcountry. It is a double-edged sword. We've got more users having good times, but we're putting more people out there that are getting in harm's way. If you spend enough time in the backcountry, you will have experiences with avalanches. So we need to make sure that we're being smart and we can continue to use the backcountry and have great experiences without getting injured. Avalanches are, are basically snow moving down a mountain and it takes three things for an avalanche to happen. You need to have unstable snow, you need to have a slope that it can slide on, and you need to have a trigger. And those triggers, you know, usually in the type of avalanches we're worried about are ourselves. Dropping five. When he came off the cornice, it wasn't until he hit the snow that the avalanche actually happened and we really didn't know what was gonna to happen to him. Yeah, big slide. Ken, get on, get on him. Yeah, I, I see the sled. I see the sled. There's him. I don't. Go. Unfortunately, I've seen quite a bit of avalanches in the mountains, and you go from this seemingly stable world, stable ground, and in an instant, you hear this big crack, and the world around you is coming down. And it's one of the scariest things in the world. We knew that if we were going to ski on a storm day, like this one, uh, we were gonna have to be incredibly attentive to the conditions and stay in, in well-anchored areas, low-angle terrain. We were all trained skiers, all very avid backcountry skiers. And the outcome was the worst outcome. Uh, we ended up losing a a really good ski partner and a, and a really good friend of, of so many people. It's incredibly important. These decisions that you make influence so many people. Unfortunately, being out in the backcountry, things can still go wrong no matter how much right you do. February 19th at Stevens Pass, um, I was in an avalanche. Uh, there was four of us in it and I was the only one to walk away alive. My first thought was, okay, I can ski off to the right, I can ski out of this. And next thing I know, it was pulling me in. So I pulled my avalanche airbag trigger once I was in the avalanche, I was immediately getting tossed and turned, and it, it literally just felt like being in a washing machine. I didn't know which way was up. I didn't know which way was down. It, you're just getting ripped every which way. You have no control. I, I hope that people can learn from, from what we went through, uh, how serious everything is. Yeah. That was awesome. Because it's a life and death situation, and uh, it's a situation that I don't want anyone to be involved with. What do you think, Ben? Yeah. The biggest risk in the backcountry is a human factor, um, whether it's lack of education, um, poor decision making, um, being overzealous in a larger group, um, the lack of intelligence in numbers, so to speak. 
the mistakes that the educated people are making is they get caught up in the situation. Maybe they're in a group setting with experienced people and they think because they're with these experienced people, it's safe. You sometimes put more trust into people um, than yourself if maybe you're, you're not used to the area and other people are more comfortable. You know, one thing that isn't as tangible as a yes or no, there is a weak layer or there's not a weak layer, is how your group works together. You have to rely on the, your group, your people you're traveling with, the people you're skiing with for your safety. When you're out there riding, you really gotta step back sometimes and think about your judgments and what it is you're gonna approach. If it's been a couple of weeks and I realize that I haven't stood on top of a line and turned around because I thought it was dangerous, that concerns me. I think the most important step, the very first step that everyone needs to take before getting in the backcountry is education. So I think as a beginner backcountry skier, you know, it's always a challenge of where do I start? There's a few critical pieces of gear that you absolutely have if you want to travel safely in the backcountry. Um, and those are a beacon, which is an avalanche transceiver. It's what we use to locate each other should we be buried under the snow. Um, a probe, which enables you to actually locate that person before you start digging. And obviously a shovel to dig. You know, I think the most important thing about having the safety equipment is knowing how to use it and practicing. And you start your signal search, all right? That's 20 meters. As many years as I've been guiding yeah. and patrolling, I don't feel good until I have three or four beacon drills under my belt at the beginning of the season. And before I even think about going out and doing avalanche control with my partner, as many years as I've been doing it, I want to be practiced up and I want to be ready. Obviously, it's really important to get yourself educated. The avalanche centers in their avalanche advisories every day are gonna give you all the points that you need to know. They're gonna give you a synopsis of the weather. They'll give you a hazard rating, which is really important, and then they'll give you a snowpack discussion. So they're gonna tell you exactly what's going on in the snowpack and what you need to worry about. Well, I think as a true backcountry enthusiast, you have to have an understanding of the snowpack through the entirety of the season. Um, you know, it changes uh, in a very quick fashion, not only, you know, day to day, but hour to hour. Every morning when you wake up, you know, and you hop online, and you're having your coffee or you're heading to school or whatever you're doing, listen to the Avalanche Report. There's a phone number you can call, there's a website you can go to. You know, even if you're going to the resort, not in the backcountry, you might read it and you'll see all of a sudden you'll very quickly learn when they're saying something, what it means in real life. Bottom line is the pros are doing a good job out there. They're giving you all the information you need to know and it's right there on the internet ready for you to look at. The other thing you can do is go into your local shops and ask those guys where you can take a class. A basic level one avalanche course is an introductory course into accessing the backcountry. I continue to educate myself. I take avalanche courses every year and you can never know too much out there. If you're not getting educated, then you're an idiot.
The mountains have made me who I am. They've given me the highest of highs, and they've unfortunately given me some of my lowest of lows. Um, but I can't live without the mountains. They'll always be a major part of me.